Join us as we cruise up the delightful Leicester Line. Four transport routes squeeze through the Watford Gap. The summit is really summit else. I get nutted by Phil. And was being a working boatman such a good job? The A5 road was built by the Romans and known as Watling Street and it chose the obvious route between two hills. This same route between the hills seemed an obvious choice for the canal. Of course, then the trains came along and the London to Birmingham railway also picked its way through the gap between the two hills. And then, in November 1959, Another transport route squeezed into the gap as well. The M1 motorway. All four stream through the quarter of a mile between the two hills close to the village of Watford. A newbie boater asked me yesterday about pump out toilets and the, uh, the smell that you can get, especially in the warm weather. Um, well, what we do to overcome this is actually to spray the toilet bowl with vinegar. Um, and this was a tip that was uh, given to us by the wonderful Lauren and it actually really works, it's really good. So um, if you get some ordinary malt vinegar, household vinegar, put it into a spray bottle and just spray it once or twice a day, it's absolutely brilliant. Of course you do get the smell of the vinegar, which you kind of get used to. If you don't want, if you don't like the smell of the vinegar, then you can actually put um, lemon, lemon, slices of lemon into it, uh, which works equally well as well. So um, yeah, that's just a really good tip. I think, think. I think we're using uh, composting toilets as well. I think it's quite common use there. Oh right, okay. Because they don't uh, have a flush. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Leicester line is really pretty so far beautifully wooded on either side, very nice indeed. Um, just beginning to hear the motorway traffic now, uh, the M1, uh, we're going to get very close to the M1 very soon and also the uh, the A5 is going to be very close as well, we're going to be stuck in between the two, so I suspect it's going to get quite noisy. Just travelling alongside the M1 motorway now, the noise is unbelievable, horrific. I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but hey, it's uh, not doing my stress levels any good whatsoever. We arrive at Watford Locks and are in a queue. You must go and find a lockie and inform him of your arrival. He certainly ain't going to come and find you. After half an hour wait, we start our ascent. Two single locks, a staircase of four, and finally a single lock, which should take about 45 minutes. The lockies are usually working throughout the summer, when the locks are open from 8am to 5pm. And so for those who aren't familiar with staircase locks, going up, the locks above you are full and are emptied one by one into the lock that you're in. This saves time and water. At Watford and Foxton there were red and white paddles and, as the lockie explains, red before white you'll be alright, white before red you're dead. Well, not literally I hope. The red paddle fills the lock from the side pond. The white paddle transfers water from the lock above into the pond. I'm now at the top of the second of four in the staircase and another boat is entering the lock below me. Once I leave this lock the water will be drained into the side pond and the bottom lock will then start to fill. About a mile north of the locks we enter Crick Tunnel which is almost a mile long. We find it helps in tunnels to switch all the cabin lights on too, so you can see the side of the tunnel. 
All of the tunnels on the Leicester line are broad tunnels and behind us another boat is entering the tunnel. Exhaust emissions are caught in the beam of our tunnel light. Emerging from the tunnel, Crick Wharf is visible. Crick Wharf once boasted a warehouse, stables, a pigsty, three lime kilns and a brick kiln, coal sheds and a pub. It was sold by the CRT in 2020 to a property developer. Fortunately, its unique history has saved it from the bulldozers. Now, ask any continuous cruiser what appeals to them about this lifestyle and I bet most will mention the freedom and the closeness to nature. The freedom because we aren't tied down to a property with a rental mortgage to pay. So it's a kind of financial freedom as well as the freedom to move from day to day. So if you're more somewhere where there's, I don't know, a yappy dog nearby or people playing loud music, you can just up sticks and move slightly further on. Also, I suppose we feel more free because we don't really live in mainstream society. And as for the closeness to nature, it's like we're living in the middle of it a lot of the time. We're more aware of the seasons because we don't live in a centrally heated house. Not only do we see the seasons change, but we very much feel it too. Much of the time, Val and I choose to moor away from roads and from traffic and away from towns and villages, preferring the sounds of the wind in the trees, rain on the roof, birdsong, ducks and swans pecking at the hull. The summit between Watford and Foxton Locks provides 20 miles of lock-free cruising. As the canal winds its way merrily through the undulating Northamptonshire countryside, it really is very pretty. It's not often I'm thrown a bag of nuts by a passing boat. Phil, I've got to say, your nuts are amazing. Now we bumped into Phil, a viewer, at Watford Locks, and he wanted to give me a bottle of wine because he enjoyed the vlogs, which was very kind, but I declined as I don't drink anymore, and Val rarely drinks. But anyway, we had a good chat about the calming, healing effect of the slow pace of life the canals give us. Nice bloke. The following day he passed by on his boat and lobbed a huge bag of nuts in my direction. They were very gratefully received and much appreciated. So cheers, Phil. The Welford arm off to the right a pretty little arm of about a mile and a quarter, which is basically a feeder from Welford and Solby reservoirs. We met my brother for lunch in the Welford Arms. We moored near North Kilworth. The forecast didn't look good. The wind got up and then the rain. Not surprised they're mooring up. We've had very little rain since February, but this downpour lasted for little more than 15 minutes. All along the Leicester line there have been some absolutely fantastic moorings but this one is a real stunner, absolutely amazing, fantastic views 
either side. Um, and this behind, these are the uh, these are the Lawton Hills. What a corker of a mooring! Just great. This is what makes boating so good, really, isn't it? I mean, to be able to call this home for a few days, absolutely amazing. You would spend a fortune buying a house to have views like that. Brilliant. I love it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, any but Monday <laughs> in September. I mean, hello. A couple of days later, it's a bit of a murky start. Low cloud hanging over the Lawton Hills. I don't think I've ever seen quite as much fruit and berries on the trees as there are this September. It's absolutely amazing. And the oak trees are absolutely dripping with acorns. The squirrels will be happy bunnies. Especially the naughty squirrels. Rev away reverie. Approaching Foxton Locks, we pull in for water before the descent. Plenty of lockies and gongooslers about. I remember a while ago a fellow boat tuber suggested that being a boater would have been an absolutely fantastic job. Really? Sure, it's all very idyllic now, pootling along, making videos, but it would have been totally different 150 years ago. The boaters were paid by the load and so worked 16 to 18 hours a day. Conditions on board would have been really cramped. Whole families living in a cabin 10 foot long by 7 foot wide. Children often had to sleep in the rope locker or in the cargo. Illness and disease were rife because of the overcrowding, bed bugs being a particular problem, and boats were frequently fumigated when stood idle. The towpaths would have been a quagmire, churned up by horses, and the canals full of human waste from the bucket and chuck it toilet system. There were no water points, and it was safer to drink beer. Locks were dangerous places especially at night and in the wet, and accidents and death weren't uncommon. There were also frequent fights at the locks. Hmm, good work if you can get it. Foxton locks were engineered by Benjamin Bevan. His thinking was to group the locks together and have feeder ponds at the side. This would save time and water so he built ten locks in two groups of five staircases, with a passing pond in the middle. If you look at the locks side on, they are actually built above the natural ground level. Soil was later built up alongside the brickwork to support the chamber walls and provide a towpath. This was easier, quicker and cheaper than digging the whole flight out of the hillside. Sometimes at locks, you see things which make you hold your breath. Just watch the toddler at the top left of the screen. We're all looking That's what she said 
For someone to share our thoughts For someone to share our beds But if you find someone That doesn't try to change you And if you find someone That doesn't have to blame you And if you find someone You don't need to explain to You found the one you love We're all searching That's all I know For someone to keep us warm When the rain soaks through our clothes And if you find a hand to hold when the night comes To be there when you're old And you're frightened If you find someone That loves you with the lights on You found the one you love So hold it near As love it comes so quickly And then it goes And be careful my dear Because the very thing